At some point or another, you've probably had an error occur in your application, either locally uh, or in production where your users are actually using it. So what we're going to look at in this video is using a service called Bugsnag. And as you can see here, this will detect and diagnose crashes in your applications. Now we're going to be looking specifically at PHP, but if you're not a PHP developer, you can watch this, follow along and integrate it into any of the languages that they support. So the other question is, why would we actually do this? Why would we sign up for a service, write more code in order to just see errors that we're getting? Well, if you think about this, when you, uh, you know, build an application, you test it, you launch it, there's always going to be some kind of error. Something will happen at some point. And what we want to do here is make it as easy as possible to see the errors that are happening so we can jump in and we can fix them. And Bugsnag is a brilliant service that allows you to do that. So what we're going to be doing then is we're going to be logging in. You'll need to sign up beforehand. We're going to be creating a new project. We're going to integrate it in and we're going to look at a couple of ways that we can actually send errors to Bugsnag either automatically or manually. And then our lives will become a lot easier. And this is the kind of product that once you have integrated it, you won't be able to live without. So let's jump over, sign in, and we'll create a new project ready to go. So once you're signed in, you're going to want to hit create a new project. And once you're at this screen, you can obviously give your project a name and you can choose the language. So I'm working with PHP. Uh, obviously, if you're working with a framework like Laravel within PHP, there's a specific package for that. But we're just going to look at vanilla PHP for now. I'm going to go ahead and continue and we'll get some setup instructions. So at the moment, you can see I have my browser window open here. Inside of this application, all I have is an index.php file that's requiring in this other file where we're going to load in our composer packages and we're going to instantiate bug snag and set any other options we need to. So the first step then would be to require in the bug snag PHP library. So within my terminal, I'm just going to paste this in that will pull in uh, version two. And now that that's finished, we can head over to our bootstrap and we can require in our composer auto loader. If you're not too sure what composer is, go ahead over to getcomposer.org, follow the download instructions, and you'll be able to use commands like this to require this into your project. So if we go and refresh on here, we should see nothing and we can get going with testing this. So on this page then, you can see that we uh, configure bug snag with that API key. It's literally as simple as that, and this will be your API key. So this is specific to your project. You don't want to uh, give it to anyone else, let anyone see it. So we can go ahead and we can pull this in. Now we have a uh, potential connection to bug snag. We're not actually sending any errors to bug snag just now, uh, but we will do when we set these error handlers. And what this will do is when we receive a PHP error that we'd normally see on the screen, this will actually trigger error handler and exception handler, uh, whether it's a normal error within a PHP application, like a syntax error, or it's actually an exception that you're throwing. We'll look at an example of doing that in a moment. So I'm literally going to copy these and I'm just going to paste them into here. I'm just going to change these over to single quotes as well. So we're now ready to go. So we now have everything set up. Let's try and trigger an error. You'll actually see that if we go back to our dashboard now, we see we're waiting to receive an error from your app. So we can either run this line of code here, which will send a test error, or we can just trigger an error ourselves. So we're gonna look at uh, one example of uh, seeing an error occur. So for example, if uh, you were to throw a normal exception, this will work. So you could build this into whatever you're building within your application. So for example, user not found. Let's go and run this and we'll see what we get. So inside of our project now, you can see we have an exception. We have one occurrence, one user, and we see an exception here. This is the type. We see the um, URL as well. So we know exactly which URL it was on. And your user not found, which was our custom exception message. And we can actually see this within our code as well. So we know the exact line that this was thrown on. Uh, depending on the kind of error, this will be either very useful or not so useful. 
So uh, we can see things like the request, which is kind of useful if you're looking at any data that has been sent through that may have triggered that error. So you can see if you're submitting a form, which uh, data that the user has submitted has caused that error. Uh, we've got host information. I'm just running Laravel or Homestead locally. We have user information. We're going to look at this uh, in a bit more detail in a moment. You can see here it's just giving me my IP address. And uh, we have uh, a host of other things as well. You can obviously go ahead and play around with this. So um, just to look at a kind of uh, custom exception. So for example, if we had user not found exception and we extend the original except uh, the base exception class in PHP and we were to throw a new user not found exception, we'll see a very similar thing. So if we go back to our errors here, you can see this time we have a type of user not found exception, which is obviously a little bit more helpful. So what happens if a, a specific user triggers an error and we need to look into their account to find out why that, that error was caused? And this could be for any reason at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this here. And inside of my bootstrap file, I'm actually going to go ahead and set the user that I want to be associated with the current session. That will give us specific information about that user, which we can then go into our database, find out if any data has caused a specific error. So all we need to do is say bug snag set user. And inside of here, we pass an array with any properties we want. So for example, uh, for a logged in user, they could be user ID of one. And obviously here, you'd want to wrap this in an if statement to check if the user is actually signed in. You don't want to set a user that isn't signed in. Uh, we could obviously give their email, really just any kind of useful information just here. So here I've just set a user with an ID of one and just given them an email address. So when I trigger another error now, you can see that we have three occurrences now. And we can actually go from the previous uh, errors all the way to the newest, so the oldest to the newest. And you can see for this latest error, we have an email of billy at cocourse.com and we have an ID of one. So we can track that particular user down. And as I mentioned, we can navigate to any previous errors as well. So we can look at uh, different users that have, have triggered the same error. And this also works for external packages as well. So for example, if you were trying to connect to MySQL and it failed, that would obviously throw an exception or it might just throw a warning. It depends on how you set it up, but that would then be logged here too. So you could potentially see if there were, there were any difficulties connecting to a server. Uh, really the limit here is endless. Uh, you can do whatever you want. So now what we're going to do is look at triggering a manual error. So this might be useful in exceptional circumstances where you want to trigger a very specific error uh, with lots of details. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say bug snag. And the method is notify error. And we have several properties in here. We can actually find these under the bug snag folder just here under source. And we can go over to client. Let's look up that notify error method. So here we have a name, a message, an array for metadata, which is just different, uh, well, basically metadata uh, with properties and values and the severity as well. So we can actually set a severity. It's also worth noting at this point that when you do receive an error with bug snag, it will send you an email as well, which is extremely useful because obviously if you're out and about and some kind of error happens, you may want to uh, see it, address it quickly and get it all fixed up. So let's go just go ahead and look at doing this. So we've got a name and a message. That's pretty simple. Say user not found and a message user not found. In fact, let's change this to something like user not found. So for the properties, then we could say, well, we want to give very specific details about the user that wasn't found. So what we could do is just say username and then write a username in there. Obviously, this is a very simple example, uh, but in real life, you'd have more interesting data in here. And then we have a severity, which can be uh, fatal error, warning, or info. So obviously something like info is very low priority. A warning's just like, oh, you know, something can't be found. In this case, it would be a use not found. Error would be an actual error. So something has gone horribly wrong, which is affecting the way that your users use your application. And then fatal, as you can imagine, is uh, extremely serious.
So for example, we could just say warning here. And you can see at the moment these severity are on red. So this is just an error. Let's go ahead and trigger this and we'll just see what we get. So now we have a user not found exception or not an exception, but this is the, the type. We have a message here. We have additional properties as well. So if we look under custom, we can see we've got username of Dale. And of course, we can see the user that this was requested from as well and uh, all of the other information too. And you can see the line in the application that's been generated. So, you know, wherever this is, wherever you're throwing this error, um, you'll be able to see this. So there is a lot more that you can do with Bugsnag in terms of managing your dashboard area. Uh, there's a few things that you can do. So just go ahead and look around. But really, just setting Bugsnag up like this, where we can set a user so we know who's causing the error, what they're doing. We are overriding PHP's normal error handling and exception handling. And uh, we're going ahead and we've looked at how we do a custom notification. And also when we throw an exception as well, uh, we'll just see normal errors. So that is Bugsnag. It's extremely useful once your application is in production and you need to keep an eye on any crashes or errors that you see.